We're going to get to our Rebecca Lopez, who has been working throughout the night. Uh, Rebecca, you spoke to Elizabeth from that video that we just showed there inside that gas station. I did, and I'm telling you, Cleo, she was just terrified. She said uh, tornadoes are one of the things that she fears the most. But let me tell you, I just got an update also from the sheriff here in Cook County who says that they are still looking for those two missing children, and they believe that those children are trapped in a home, and they are trying to still find those, the, those children. And so it's just devastating news here. And you can see how powerful the storm was here at this Shell gas station when it hit. The roof is just right behind me. It just blew all the way off over here. And then over my other shoulder, you will see cars. That's just one of dozens of cars that were, and you can see the, the as uh, Josh pans off, you can see dozens of cars that were left by people that went running inside this uh, Shell gas station and also employees and other people that were just in there uh, doing business. And so just terrifying for Elizabeth and, uh, and those that survived this storm. I've always had like a horrible fear of tornadoes too. Elizabeth Hernandez can't believe she lived through one of her worst fears. I honestly, whenever it was hitting us, I thought I was just waiting for it to pick us up or slam something onto us. She and her friends sheltered inside a gas station bathroom, praying and trying to shield her friend's little girl as debris swirled around them. Yeah. She captured a little of it on her cell phone. We were all hovering over her and we were praying and as we were praying there was um, we could feel all the stuff like go and then like we could feel the wind and then like the roof caved in. Elizabeth says dozens of people as seen in this video were trapped inside. We couldn't get out because like whenever you open the door there was stuff all falling. It took firefighters almost an hour to free them and this is what they saw when they walked out. I don't know how we made it but I'm just glad that we did and I'm glad we I don't know how that didn't kill us. And we have obviously a lot of damage here, but there's also a lot of damage in Salina, and that is where my colleague Jobin Punnaker is standing by live. Jobin. Yeah, Rebecca, what we're seeing here is absolutely tragic, and it's hard to even mention that there's any good news in any of this, but there is some good news in that nobody was injured. There are no fatalities here in this part of Salina, which is, um, which is really good news. This is also not a very densely populated place. Uh, the, if, we're, if we're saying this is a possible tornado, it may have touched down in sort of the agricultural parts of, of Salina and then pushed over here. There are about more than a dozen homes that see significant damage. But what the Aragonez family is, is, is dealing with right now, and I want to show you, is by far the worst um, part here in Salina. Now, the Aragonez family moved here in 1992. They have about three or four homes just on this one plot of land on these 20 acres. Look what it did to this home. The walls are gone, roof obviously gone. It feels like it just lifted up and then pushed over to the side because all the all the debris is down on the ground here. Um, if you want to, Matt, if we can show them the pantry. The pantry is the only thing that is standing, which is surprising. You see the washing machine there as well. That's the only thing that's standing. The front door is gone. Every, obviously, everything else is gone. And I mean, obviously, everything that we're, that we're walking on is all glass. We have some shingles here. And obviously, you have all the stuff that was inside the house also here. Now, Maria, Maria, the grandmother, um, was staying inside the house. Uh, as soon as they heard about the sirens, heard the sirens, family called over and brought her into this house where her daughter lives. That's where they stayed. They stayed inside uh, the closet. And that's where they huddled and stayed safe. Um, obviously, they're counting their blessings right now because um, they understand if she was still inside there, she would she would not be alive. Um, and that's that's a tough thing to hear. Um, here, there was a there was a travel trailer here, and I'm going to introduce them in just a second. Here, this is where Juan and Juanita uh, lived, and as you can see, absolute devastation. There is uh, nothing, very little you can salvage here. And I've got Juan, Juanita. You're trying. I know you're trying to find some stuff. You're still looking for your laptop, laptop IDs. IDs, yes, uh, normal stuff. Now you also. I know Maria mm -hmm. um, just left just within minutes before this tornado. Yeah, we watched the uh, action or the, or the uh, TV, and uh, I asked her to go get mom out. We got our son, and we took off next door, and literally walked in the house. No hi, no nothing. Just got in the closet, and boom, that was it. 
So you drove from here to the yeah, house on the back. And, the, and, and what would you say? Our neighbors. About a, her, her, her about neighbors. a football field mm -hmm. down this way. And, and I'm sure you were you were hauling that way. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And literally just walked in, no hello, no anything else. And just that's it. But Juanita, what, when you did, did you heard the tornado, you felt it. What, what did that feel like? Oh, it was it was scary. I mean, you hear you heard the, the the loud noise, and my aunt just said, "Get inside!" And we took off running, and get in, and it just I mean, it just stuff was flying everywhere. You're starting to I, see, yeah. Go ahead. I stayed by the uh, stupidly. I stayed by the back deck area, looking out the window, and it looked just like a normal windstorm. But once it cleared, we just literally walked through that deck few minutes before a couple minutes now you couldn't walk through there you know, the barn door and uh, debris and the barbecue grill, everything was out there just like that it got covered there's debris there's debris everywhere yeah, across everywhere. three or four different homes on this plot right yes. Juanita I can tell you're shaken yeah. what yeah. are you what are you feeling in this moment in this moment just it's just hard it's, you know we've never dealt with this and we never thought we would have to but we're alive, so that's what matters. That everything else can be uh, replaced, but not our lives. So. I had a chance to talk to your to your mother, mm -hmm. Maria. She she escaped from this home with the help of a grandson. Uh -huh. yeah. Our son and us. Yeah, he was in there and literally went in there and said, "Let's get out." And my nephew came from over there, drove over here, picked her up, took her there. We grabbed our son got in the car and we took off that way and we were going to go in that ditch over there but then I called my aunt and she's like no come to my house and we that's when we went inside her house because if we probably would have been over there we probably wouldn't be here today and I'm sure if you hesitated at all to get yeah. mom out of the house yeah they wouldn't be here either so but we're blessed that we're here today and like I said we have a lot of family and friends that will help us out yeah I was told um, by Rogelio your father, that a lot of families, are, a lot of families coming down yes. to to yeah, to help out. Yeah, they we are. Have friends and family coming out to help us clear some debris, get whatever we can save, and just that's about it. And bring whatever food and water. Although I found some water, so uh, we'll be good. We'll be good. How do you describe what you see? I, I saw this at night. Uh, once I knew this passed over, I came over with a flashlight, and that's kind of where I went. You know, got emotional because I mean. <laughs> Our place used to be here, storage, and it, it's just, wow, you can't believe like I'll be on the other side of it as an insurance agent, but now I'm the other side of it as, as uh, you know, uh, someone that it happened to, and that's, it's hard to describe. It's it's pretty bad. Yeah. It's, uh, well, Rogelio, you're, uh, Juan, you're, you're a blessing to your family to be at least an insurance agent who knows how to handle in yeah. these situations. Yeah. You know, we're seeing stories like this. Um, up and down this road, we are on County Road 101, right? This is 101. And this is actually a private road um, into here that leads to three homes. And I think you're an insurance agent, one. We're talking, what, three homes? Five, five vehicles? I know if we have to put numbers on these things. ATVs. And ATVs. Um, and we have trailer as well. Um, and obviously a whole lot of memories in these homes that... Juan and Juanita are trying to pick through right now to see if they're still there. The pictures, the IDs, all the things, the photo albums, the things that are very hard to replace. But uh, they are counting their blessings because um, this could be obviously be a lot, lot worse. Marielle, back to you. It's, it's so hard to see all of that damage, and I'm so glad those families are safe. Our hearts go, go out to them, of course. And I do want to point out two things before I show you this track. And one of those is that they mentioned that they, were, they had someone looking out for them, right? They were watching the storms on television, and, and that's life-saving information. That is something that will make you make the right decision in a matter of seconds. That's one. So they had a way to get warnings. The second is you saw that building that Jobin pointed out and that building at the pantry, it was still standing very often when we're talking about tornado warnings and we're talking about a safe place. We are talking about the middle part of your house. There were likely several walls between the outside of the house and that pantry, which is why that pantry is still standing. So that's just something I want to emphasize those two things, a way to get warnings 
and knowing the safe spot in your home. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about that track. Storm reports. These are three of the strongest storm reports that we saw from overnight. This, by the way, happened between 930 PM to one in the morning. This was a very long lived thunderstorm. And this, uh, whenever I draw the path out here, it, it spanned over several counties, including Denton and Northern Collin County. And look at that strong, strong supercell. Whenever I'm estimating the length of the path, it comes out to over 100 miles over the span of three hours. This is a very, very strong supercell that occurred overnight. And I do want to emphasize that we are in the clear now. Now, we did see another cluster of storms move through overnight, and we have those storms now pushing southeast. We're seeing some cloud cover still overhead, but that's moving southeast as well. Now, the main concern about today is the potential for uh, heat. We have that heat advisory in place until 8 uh, this evening, and it does include Hill, uh, Navarro County. It includes Henderson County for heat index values of 105 or higher. High temperature today in Dallas, 98 degrees in Dallas, Fort Worth. The record for today is 99, so we're close to record heat today, but the heat index will be in the triple digits, and that will be the case across DFW towards the south where that heat advisory is in place, and that heat advisory, by the way, extends to the south. Right now is in Dallas or at DFW 80 degrees, but it feels like 81. So we are still dealing with uh, humidity and of course it's not even nine this morning. Wind out of the southwest at 10 to 20. Your outdoor planner for today showing that rain ending. So look at that 10% coverage. The rest of the day, I'm not expecting rain. High temperature near 98 happens around three. That's when the heat index will be close to 102. Now tomorrow, look at this 10% coverage of rain, a high of 94 degrees on Memorial Day Monday. Most of the day will be dry, but I want to show you this. We start out with cloud cover. We clear out throughout the day and then Monday night. I think a few thunderstorms could very well develop, especially to the southeast of DFW. So I'll be watching that. And that's just the first next round because we are expecting additional rounds of rain. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I have rain in the forecast every day uh, next week. That's going to accumulate to two to three inches in some spots, some spots higher to the southwest. So we'll be watching that. And every day we have the potential to see these storms. A few could be on the strong side. So definitely want to make sure to pay close attention to the forecast. Uh, pay attention to the forecast and make sure that you're checking back in with us because, I mean, we're still looking at a very active pattern, Cleo. I think I don't want to go anywhere yet. I'm shaking. Car's still shaking. Stuff's still flying. Just a scary moment there. As Marielle had mentioned there, those strong storms and possibly a tornado hitting our northern counties last night during a very busy travel weekend. This video was taken by Valeria Gill while she was on I-35 and Farm Road on 3002. Now, now those strong winds actually broke the mirror on her car. She was scared. But some good news here this morning, even after that round of severe storms last night, power outages are normal this morning. A few scattered across the Metroplex here. And even though these rounds of severe storms have wrapped up here, there are still more chances for rain in our forecast this week. So please, if you haven't already, download our WFAA app so that you can see the latest updates on when storms will move in. And then you can use our radar to see what exactly is happening in your neck of the woods as well. Now to one of our top stories right now online. Condolences are pouring in after the death of a two-time PGA Tour winner, Grayson Murray. Murray had just withdrawn from Grayson the Colonial in Fort Worth yesterday. He died Saturday morning. The PGA Tour commissioner made his way to Fort Worth after that news broke. He spoke on the broadcast calling golf a very tight-knit community. Listen, Grayson was a remarkable player, was a remarkable player on the PGA Tour. Um, but he was a very courageous man as well. And um, I've always loved that about him. And I know that the locker room is filled with people um, that really will take that away when they think about Grayson. Now, according to the PGA, Murray's parents asked that the tournament continue. It's still not clear what led to Murray's death. The death of a soldier from North Texas was ruled a homicide this week, and her family increased the reward to catch the killer. We're not okay right now. 
Also, Cecilia, if you want to make some... Atia Duenas Aguilar's younger sister, she and her mother wept during a news conference organized by LULAC, the League of United Latin American Citizens. Now, Katia is from Mesquite. She was serving at Fort Campbell near the Tennessee and Kentucky border. Her body was found at an apartment near the base. The reward is now set to $55,000. We want justice and we want anybody and everybody that has information to come forward. Their information will be kept confidential and trust and believe we will follow this all the way to justice. Katia was just 23 years old, the mother of a four-year-old boy. Police have released no official information about how she died just yet. Returning back to our breaking news, people waking up to damage after severe storms destroyed buildings, overturned RVs and flipped 18 wheelers in Denton and Cook County. So far, we know at least two people are dead. We have crews in those areas right now as fire medic and fire rescue crews rather work to help those in the area. It is quite a mess out there out in Denton and Cook counties. We've had crews uh, working all night mm -hmm. to really see the damage, speak to families. I mean, they've lost everything. We heard with Jobin, right? That family telling us they're just thankful to be alive. Yeah, and I'm so glad they were paying attention. They mm -hmm. were being weather aware. Oh. And like I mentioned earlier, that is what allowed them to make a decision that saved their lives yeah. uh, and you know we uh, were tracking this all night Kyle Roberts was here it started just after 9 30 mm -hmm. and he was on air until 1 <sighs> in the morning uh, so tracking this it was a very long strong uh, storm and and we've said it all spring right we've said it's severe weather season severe weather season if these storms form they will be strong they will be severe and last night was if became one. And Mariela, as you had mentioned, because my ears wide open here, you said, please make sure you know a way to get the weather alerts, right? You have a way mm -hmm. to get the weather alerts and then you have a place to go. Yeah, you need a plan too. Once you know that the threat is imminent, you right. need to have a plan already mm -hmm. in place. Mm -hmm. That way you just, you know where to go. You know where that safe spot is. It'll save your life. Oh. The good news, Cleo, is that we are we're done with the rain for today. Uh, so that's going to really allow these families to really uh, recover, right? Um, and we are, we're still looking at some cloud cover in the area. Uh, the rain is, is still exiting Navarro County and it's moving to the southeast. There are a couple of severe thunderstorms to our south, but there are none in North Texas. We have no active severe watches or anything like that. We are going to see that our skies are going to clear throughout the rest of the day and those temperatures are going to climb. That's why we have a heat advisory in place and that heat advisory is in place for Hill, Navarro, at Henderson County towards the southeast. This is for heat index values or feels like temperature of 105 or higher. This is going to be in place not just for today, but for Monday as well. It expires at 8 p.m. on Monday, so through the day Monday. And this is why the high temperature today will be 98 degrees. And this is going to be across the Metroplex. Some spots to the west will be in the triple digits. That's where air is slightly drier. The record today, by the way, at DFW, 99. So we will be close to record heat this afternoon. The heat index in the triple digits, and that does extend towards the southeast, where, again, the heat index values are expected to be at 105 or higher this afternoon. Right now, we're at 80 degrees. Winds are out of the southwest at about 10 to 20. After the line of storms came through about 3, 4 in the morning, we had winds that really kicked up quite a bit. So you may see some, some tree limbs or maybe even a lot of leaves on your yard because of those high winds. Those have now settled. But it'll be breezy at times throughout the day. I'm not calling it windy anymore. I'm expecting that temperature to climb to about 87 degrees around 11, 93 degrees around 1, 98 degrees around 3 this afternoon. And that's when the heat index will be in the triple digits. We'll see sunshine all day and a south wind at 15 to 25. Tomorrow, the high temperature only 94. And I say only because we are dropping things to a cold front, believe it or not. That front arrives tonight into early tomorrow. It's going to help bring in drier air, so the humidity won't be quite as high on Monday. But I want to bring your attention to this, that 10% chance of rain. That's going to happen late in the day. This is what it'll shape like. 
This is Monday 7 in the morning. We start with that cloud cover moving in from the south and we'll eventually see the skies clear. But Monday late in the day, uh, four or five in the afternoon, we may start to see some activity towards our southeast. Most of us will stay dry on Monday, so we'll be watching for that. And that just kind of kicks off several more rounds of rain. Monday late in the day, that's only about 10% coverage. It goes up to 30% coverage on Tuesday, 40% coverage Wednesday, Thursday, and 50 on Friday. It continues into next weekend as well. Now, with these rounds of rain, we have the potential to accumulate quite a bit, two to three inches in a matter of a few days. Across DFW, slightly higher amounts to the southwest. So we'll be watching for a flood threat on any given day especially because our soils are already pretty saturated. And of course, every day will look a bit different because this activity will be pretty scattered. So I need you to keep checking back in with us each day because we will be able to track these storms with you. And with each day, as those storm chances climb, we're talking highs that are in the mid 80s. So we'll, we'll chill out with the heat for a little bit, at least middle part of the week. We just have to be very attentive, of course, to that uh, stormy pattern, Cleo. Yeah, Mariel, quite a 14 day forecast there. We're gonna take a live look over DFW International Airport right now. There are still millions of Americans traveling to their holiday destinations here this weekend and ahead of tomorrow as well. Those traveling by air dealing with some packed airports right now on Friday. TSA says they screened more than 2.9 million travelers, surpassing the previous record set during the Thanksgiving holiday weekend last year. Now, according to AAA here, more than 38 million people will be driving to their destinations this weekend. Here's a look at the cost for a gallon of gas right now. Statewide, it's about $3.15 in Dallas, Tarrant, Denton, and Collin counties, it's going to cost you more to fill up. Those four counties are in the $3.30 range, rather, to give you some perspective there. Let's take another live look near Ray Roberts Marina, another spot that got hit hard overnight with that supercell storm that meteorologist Maria Ruiz had just mentioned, telling us about at least five people are dead more than 60 people injured following the reported tornado there Saturday night near Valley View. The Cook County Sheriff has confirmed that. Thank you so much for spending part of your Sunday with us. We're working to bring you the very latest on those deadly tornadoes throughout the day on air and online at WFA.com. Please join us back here at 530 with our Teresa Woodard and Kyle Roberts.